All right, guys, welcome to part two of the video. This time we're going to continue talking about the junior enlisted junior NTO promotion board in Army Reserve. So we're talking about the document you need for that packet, and we listed all 13 of them. This video we're going to focus on just number one, the promotion packet composition election form. This is what it looks like. You can find this form on the uh, Army Publishing Directorate's website. Section A, soldier and unit info, fill this out. Keep in mind that your so the soldier's email address should be your military, your dot mail, uh, military email. You put your UIC, your unit, uh, your OFTS command. It was what was initially called the major subordinate command. So in the Army Reserve, which we're focusing on here, my major, uh, major subordinate command is going to be the 412 tech. The 412 Theater Engineer Command. So find out what yours is and put it there. Command Governing Board. You can leave that blank. Um, your unit point of contact in the Army Reserve most likely will be your UA. Put his or her phone. And just scroll down Section B and initial the ones that apply to you. The ones that don't apply to you, just put non-applicable and A. So... DA Form 3355, you're definitely going to have to initial that because that's the uh, document that works your promotion point. So you're going to come onto that. Your official DA photo, remember from the last video I said, it's not required for the Junior Promotion Board, but if you have it, it looks great. Section B, your ARB or your SRB, you put it there, make sure it's updated. Anyway, you could just go through all these and... um. The ones that apply to you, like I said, initial. If it doesn't apply to you, put an A and just move on. If you mobilize your initial here, uh, let's see, let's see what else is important. You prove of civilian education. If you're seeking promotion to sergeant and staff sergeant, which is junior NTOs, which are junior NTO positions, proof of civilian education can include unofficial transcripts. So keep in mind to get promotion points, like I said. So you could provide the unofficial transcripts here for the junior NTL. If senior NTLs, we're not going to get into that, but pretty much you just complete your highest level. So if you have a master's degree, all you're going to put is the certificate for the master's. You don't have to show like your associates or your bachelor's. If you have a security clearance, you put it there. If not, you put non applicable. NTL ERs. Well, if you're in specialist going seeking promotion to sergeant, you're not going to have an NTOER, so you put non applicable. If you're a sergeant seeking promotion to staff sergeant, you put in your NTOER. As you see here, it says must include at least, at a minimum, the last five. Well, if you've only been a sergeant for a year or two years, you don't have five NTOER, so put the ones you have. Military academic reports, which are your DA 1059s, which are the forms you get after military courses like BLC, ALC. And uh, include them there. If you have them, definitely initial. Also, certificate of training from military correspondent courses, like I mentioned in the previous video. Uh, AKO, JKO, sorry, JKO, ALMS, ATARS, whatever courses you've completed there in the entirety, you have the uh, certificates for them. Include them here. And as far as the courses that give you correspondent point, you could go to the um, JKO's website and, and find out what points give you DL credit, which DL is distributed learning. So not every course gives you points. You could also find that out on HRC's uh, website. Next, you put your military awards and, and letters of commendation, letters of appreciation, letters of achievement. Sorry, certificates of achievement, certificates of appreciation. Put them in there. If you're mobilized, you'll fill out this area. If not, you'll put non applicable. If you're a mill tech, exactly. If this you read and you initial. Now, this is the next important part your preferences. So, for me, I live in Miami. I put a, a mileage of 350. I was willing to drive up to 350 miles. So, for Miami, that puts me around Jacksonville or oh, to Tallahassee. You know, so Miami is the further south, so you can only go north from there. So for me, I'm willing to travel as far south as, as far north as Tallahassee and Jacksonville. I'm not going to go to Georgia. 
It's all your preference. I know a guy who put 50 points, you know. You can put 100, you can put 120, you can put 1,000, depending on how far you're willing to travel. Just keep in mind that the farther you're willing to travel, the more positions are going to be open to you. And in the Army Reserve, you get promoted based on slots, based on availability. So just keep that in mind. Very true, initial, the one that applies to you, the one that does not apply to you, NA, as usual. Now, this is another important part, drill sergeant. Um, so this section says you're willing to apply to positions to require additional training, so, such as drill sergeant or instructor. So what I put in my packet at the time was uh, instructor. Instructor includes the SGLs, the BLC, or the... Um, AIT instructors when you went for AIT. So I think um, an instructor is SQIH, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so fill this out in the show here and here just to express your interest in that position. And scroll down and the show the ones that apply to you. Print your name. Don't sign until the very end because once you sign, or your CAC, it's going to lock up, lock out the document. So make sure you've completed everything before you sign it. Scroll down. If you got a waiver, you put that. If not, NA. If this applies to you, initial. Your record custodian is either your UA or not, sorry, not your UA, your HR specialist so your S1. Have them rev review everything. They'll print and sign. Same as your first sergeant. Well, you include your stuff here. Your first sergeant and your commander. So pretty much that's it. This concludes the video. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out in the comments. Or reach out to your chain of command, your first line leader. And I'm sure they'll be happy to help you. Alright guys, I'll see you in the next video.